Good evening, Jesus Image Church. How are you guys doing? Thank you, Lord. What an honor it is to be here tonight and get to just worship Jesus together. We just want to welcome everyone online that's joining us. What an honor it is to worship with you guys. Um, I just want to read from Revelation 4, um, verse 8. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they, did, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him, who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. So Lord, we come before you with hungry hearts, hearts to minister to yours, Lord, saying you are worthy, you are holy. Tonight, Lord, be glorified. Tonight, Lord, we pray that we just come and love on you. We have no other motive than just to love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
death had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day.
your holy name
receive all the glory and all of the power forever. Lord, receive all the glory and all of the power Lord, receive all the glory and all of Lord, receive all the glory and all of the honor and all of the power. Lord, receive all the glory and all of the honor and all of the power forever. Lord, receive. Lord, receive all the glory and all. song to
spirit in the bright second root of Jesse eternal son come Lord Jesus come come Lord Jesus come the spirit Lover of 
And I bow before your throne to worship. Lord, you are. Lord, you are. Lord, you are the lover. Exalted over all, and I bow before your throne to worship. Lord, you are, Lord, you are the lover of my soul. Stand. You are exalted over all, and I bow before your throne to worship you. Lord, you are, Lord, you Lord, 
with your hands and begin to sing this. again we fall down we fall down we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus the greatness of your mercy and love at the feet of Jesus and we cry we cry holy 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 we cry holy 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 we cry holy 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 is a just close your eyes forget about everything just sing we fall down forget about everything
Just lift our hands and begin ministering to the Lord in the Spirit all over this place. Come on. Put your body under subjection. The scripture says, I will bless the Lord. Every voice, every voice.
voice, every voice. I stand in Wait right here in his presence in silence without anyone moving anyone crying out just play softly on the instruments as you are let's give our full attention to the Lord Jesus Cast your care upon him now. Your pain, your troubles, just cast them at his feet. Keep waiting on the Lord. Wonderful, Jesus, fill your people with your spirit once again. You all join hands, it's not across the aisles. Allison, would you come here? Would you lead us in prayer? Keep your eyes closed there. Give all of your attention to Jesus. Jesus, we recognize that you're in the room. We honor your holy presence, Lord. We ask for eyes to see you tonight, Lord. Burning hearts to know, to know you, Jesus. I ask, Lord, that you would still every heart in the room, every wayward mind, Remove every distraction. That tonight, Jesus, we would behold you in your beauty, your splendor. That our eyes would burn with first love again. Lord, we're here for you. 
are here for you, Jesus. Would you come closer, God? Would you come closer, Jesus? Pour out your spirit, Lord, on the young and on the old. Pour out your spirit. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. We yield our bodies. We submit our wills. We submit our lives right now, God. Expand our capacity to be in your presence, Jesus. We want to know you, Lord. Would you show us your glory, God? Would you show us your glory? Just as Moses asked, show us your glory, God. Show us your face. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. You can let go of that hand next to you. and I want you to hear the words of Jesus. With, stay there with your eyes closed. Jesus said, if we do not forgive, our Father in heaven will not forgive us. How many of you would say that you are in need of forgiveness from God? Every hand should go up. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, that we're not walking in the truth. I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to look into your heart right now and allow him to show you if there's somebody or maybe it's more than one person whose sin you're holding against them. And if so, I want you to take the next 30 seconds and verbalize your forgiveness. Name them. And then I want you to go beyond that. I want you to pray blessing upon them. Even if they're making your life difficult, see them as a tool. Even God used Nebuchadnezzar to accomplish his purpose. So go ahead. Go ahead right where you are. And I should be hearing some chatter here. I should be hearing you talk. Release them as you declare it. Even if you don't feel like you can, release them by name and then begin to pray for God's best in their life. Go ahead. to speak blessing now. Come on, do it. I want to hear you. Do it. Do it. Thank you, Father. Father, we commit this night to you. This is your house and we are your people. Thank you for the honor of knowing your touch and presence. You are beautiful. Tell them that, would you? You are beautiful, Jesus. Have your way in us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give the Lord praise tonight? Give him all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give the Lord all the glory. Hallelujah. And would you please thank this worship team and the choir for leading you. Thank you, Lord. You can go back to your seats. Welcome, everybody. You happy to be in the Lord's presence tonight? Wasn't that beautiful? 
Kaylee, can we welcome Kaylee to the platform, please? evening. Thank you so much, Lord, for your presence here. I had First Chronicles prepared, but after that last song, the Lord shifted my whole heart because all I could think about was that one day, like Pastor Michael said this morning, we're going to breathe our last. And we're going to stand before him, and the king is in the room. How many people know that right now? How many are keenly aware that he is here and that we get one day to cast our crowns at his feet. So I want to read, I want to read from Revelations just the scene of the throne room. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they, did, they do not rest day or night, saying, holy, holy, holy. He is worthy. Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. He loves you. He's your supply. He's your source. And one day we'll cast our crowns. I want to give him all that I can on this side of eternity. I want to know that when I meet him face to face, and I will, I want to stand there and know that I gave when he asked me to out of obedience and love. This is not obligatory. He's, he's worthy. And it's so easy to give our lip service to the Lord and it's beautiful and it matters. And he cares and he wants us to. It's precious to him. But this is an extension of that. He's a king and he deserves all. And as I grow in my relationship, and I hope that this, I pray this over us, that as we grow in our walk with him, that we yield more and more of our time and our worship. And I hope one day when we have our building, there's hours of worship. And we don't even have to give an offering because we just come and we give. Because that's who we are. Because he's holy. And one day we'll meet him. And even now we get to be in his presence. And so I just want to encourage you that when you give in the bucket, you are giving to a living God and he loves you and you can trust him with that. So let's give to the Lord and let's pray over our seed sown. Father, I thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you for coming, Lord. Thank you for your mercy to come as we yield our heart and our, our devotion and our affections to you, Lord. And I ask that you would meet every giver here and that the joy of giving and that yielded heart of affectionate love would well up inside of us as we give into your hands, Lord. In your holy, precious name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you're in the room, there's a few ways you can give. You can give by the prompts on your screen. Or if you want to give by check or cash, you can raise your hand and an usher will bring you an envelope. If you're watching online, there's some prompts on your screen as well. And also just want to invite you to partner. If, if you're watching online or maybe you're visiting in the room, this is separate from the tithe. If you want to find out more about how to partner with what the Lord is doing here and in the United States through Jesus Image, you can scan the QR code and learn more about partnership. Thank you. We'll be right back.
we stand and thank the Lord? Wow. We've been in his glory together, haven't we? Let's give Jesus all the praise. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What beautiful memories. Um, who, who's going to bring them up? Amy, why don't you come? We miss seeing Amy dance, but it's for good reason. <laughs> wearing the same thing, huh? Without the hat. Yeah. Um, so this morning, if you guys uh, were watching online or if you guys were in the room, we have an incredible opportunity that this week for Jesus School is Look Missions Week. Sorry. Ah, it's so funny. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> He'll be one of and those. And they met at Jesus yeah. School. Yes, yes, we met at Jesus School, my husband and I, yeah. yeah. That, that, yeah. Come to Jesus School. Come Amen. to Jesus School. Um, well, we have an incredible opportunity this week. This is week, um, our missions week for Jesus School. Amen. It's exciting. Um, and this morning, this year, we get to go abroad. And so we sent a team this morning to Germany. They're they actually... Left, right? Have they flown out yet? They're in the air. We'll pray for them again tonight. Yeah. Yes. And so we have a bunch of other students that are going to California, Texas, Atlanta, and then all over um, Orlando. And nursing, so, aren't they doing nursing homes, hospitals, everything? Hospitals, yeah. nursing homes. I know uh, food drives here. I know in Atlanta, there's um, we do in Atlanta. There's food drives. We feed the homeless, pray for the sick, go out into the region, like. America is touched by the presence of God and so many lives are changed. And so we want to send out all of these students in prayer and intercede for what the Lord's going to do this week. Amen. So for those of you guys that are coming, I know there's many of you. Um, so we're just going to ask for some of you guys to come up to the well, altar. Why don't you all come up here? You guys, they'll help us pray. And then Call the students. Please. All right. So for those of you guys who are all going to missions this week, that should be every single one of you, um, come to the altar. Some of you guys can come on the stairs. Yeah, we'll just kind of stack up on the stairs and, 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 the, and the altar. Look at all of them. I know. This is amazing. Yeah, let's move that pulpit. Come on. Welcome them, would you? Come on. Welcome them real good. This is beautiful. Turn that way. Yeah, I want the church to see y'all. We'll come around. Yeah, tur turn the other way. Yeah, yeah. You can just get on the stairs and face that way like a big class picture. All right. Isn't this great? So beautiful. And we're not going to be able to get our hands on all of them, but the Lord can. Amen. Got a few more students coming. It's so wonderful to give away what the Lord has done in us. So. Kaylee, I want you guys, Madeline, Joe, Wheelers, the uh, worship team, if you're there in your front row, just kind of agree with some of them, get your hands on them. Same with this row that's usually right up there up front. Tasia, your row. And uh, Amy, why don't you give, begin praying? And I want everyone just to stretch their hands, if you would, towards these students and servants of the Lord. Yes. Come on. Father, we just Lift thank you. We thank you for spirit. every single one of these students, those who are in the air right now, and those who leave this week, God. Lord, we thank you. You said in your word that the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. So I thank you, God, that we get to send out laborers, Lord, to touch your people, Lord, for sowing a seed. Come on, church, let's, let's get on this, Lord, that, that, that lives are going to be changed, God. I thank you, Jesus, Bless that you, people are going to come to know you this week, God. I thank you, you for hearts God. transformed, Jesus. I thank you for healings, Lord, healings among the nations, Jesus. I thank you, Father. Protect every single one of these students, Lord. I thank you for what you're going to do in California, in Atlanta, Jesus, in Texas, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for the harvest the harvest that is ready, the harvest that is ripe. I thank you, Lord, for people that are come, that are going to come to know you, that are going to meet Jesus Christ, the living God. I thank you for stony hearts to turn to flesh, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, 
Father, we bless every single student. And Lord, would you impact their lives, Jesus, that they get to be the hands and feet of Jesus. They get to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. Lord, they, they would go lowly. They would see Jesus in every single person. And Father, we thank you for what you're gonna do. And I thank you for radical miracles over this nation, radical miracles Come in on, Orlando, church, agree, Jesus. Agree. Father, we thank you for, for Orlando to be shaken this week, God, that so many people, I even pray that that Sunday, next week, Sunday is full of testimonies and full of people that met you this week because of missions. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you're gonna do, Jesus. We bless you, God. We bless you, Jesus. And Father, that as a church, we will be interceding every single day for what you're gonna do, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Joel, would you come and pray? Keep praying, guys. I want them to go forth with the blessing of the house. Jesus said that we were to go preach the gospel of the kingdom. Yes, Lord. Cleanse yes, the leper, Lord. cast out demons, heal the sick, Jesus raise the dead. Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So, Lord, on, I pray, ahead. Father God, for a fresh outpouring of your spirit upon yes, everybody Lord. going to do your work right now, Lord, that you would begin to equip them and empower them, Father God, that they would be filled with the authority, my God, to heal the sick, Father God, set the captives free, Father God, Lord, to love the unlovable, my God. Lord, I pray, God, that you would put them on like a glove, my God, that they would be windows to you, my God, that people would see you through them, my God. Lord, I pray a hedge of your protection, my King, Lord mm -hmm. Jesus, that nothing would come against them, my God, that they would uh, minister with such an ease my king lord may they be filled with your presence my god in jesus mighty name lord we pray amen. amen i want us to pray tonight for the team that's flying right now to germany uh lily i want you to pray we'll pass the mic to lily guys so can you help me there jody yeah give that to jimmy there they're flying right now as we speak to germany they're going to be serving so beautifully with the sisters helping serve at the sisterhood and with brother Yoon. So would you go ahead? Jesus, we thank you for every life that's on that plane right now, Jesus. We ask that the, the ministry would start now, Lord, that the people on the plane, that the, your presence would fill the plane right now, Jesus. And the people sitting to the right and to the left of these students would start encountering the Lord Jesus. That they would see this is the beginning of their missions trip, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, I ask that you would encounter each one of these students as they pour your love on the streets of Germany, God. I ask that you would be filling them, that it would be all your work, all words coming from directly from you, Lord, that you would so fill them that there would be no flesh, Lord, that nothing will be done of the flesh, but all will be done through your spirit, Lord. I pray that you would encounter each one of these students, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would encounter them with the passion of your love. I pray as they sit with Brother you and Jesus that they would see the sacrificial life of what it means to give your full yes, God. Yes, Lord. I pray that that would deeply mark them. Yes, Lord. That they would come burning, that they would come with more of a passion for you, more of a love for you, more of a desire for you. That this wouldn't drain them, but that this would fill them. Yes, Lord. And that the outpouring would come back and they would finish Jesus' school strong in this year. And that they would bring it back to their families, Amen. God, and their families will be touched, Lord. I thank you for each one of these students, yes, God, their obedience to you, Lord. I ask that the gospel will be preached in clarity and in truth, Jesus. Mm that they, as they're speaking it, that the gospel will become even more and more real to each student, God, each time that they say it, each time that they say it, that you're equipping them, Lord, even more and more for your kingdom, Jesus. So we thank you, Father. Thank you. We thank you for everyone going on missions today, Jesus. And we pray that the ones that are going to Germany right now, Lord, that they will have a safe trip, Lord, that there will be no harm against them, God that you would be protecting them, Jesus, that you would be there, Lord. We thank you, Father. Amen. Now, Father, we lift up this city of Orlando. And we ask you, look, come on. We ask you, Lord, in Jesus, come on, begin to cry out. We ask you, Lord, 
for, for the, an outpouring of your precious spirit in this city. We ask you, Lord, to let your light shine here in this city, that this city would be like a city set on a hill where the broken, the wounded, the confused, the tormented, the lost, and the sick would find the light of Jesus. Lord, visit our city with your precious power. We pray, Lord, for other churches in this city, that your hand would rest upon the pastors. We honor them, Lord. We honor your servants. I said we honor the servants of the Lord here at Jesus Image. And we ask you, Lord, to protect them and their families, to keep them. May the blood of Jesus be a hedge about them. We ask you, Lord, to bless their churches and to fill them with your precious presence. Give them a love for your holy word. And may the testimony of Jesus ring true in every church. Let us be servants of the Lord Jesus and servants of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, can we honor this precious group? Can we thank the Lord? How wonderful. Go forth in the blessing of God, everyone. I can't wait to hear the testimonies. Let them know you love them one more time. You guys are welcome to go back to your seats. Come on, let them know you love them. So beautiful. Thank you, buddy. All right, y'all can be seated. I'm going to break the rules tonight. I'm going to preach for a little bit. Pastor Michael is going on vacation one day. And I said driving here, I'm not preaching. And then I got into his presence and I said, I'm preaching. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Bill told me once, it's time for you to take a Sunday off when you can't stand the sound of your own voice. And I got there today. So I just stayed real quiet. <laughs> I didn't want to hear myself. As I was driving, I turned the YouTube on just to make sure everything was nice. And uh, I felt the Lord lead me to teach until 8.30, unless we get into a flow, which is most likely going to happen. <laughs> Thank you. How many of you were not here today? This morning, could you raise your hand? All right. How many of you came in from out of town to be here? Wow, so amazing. Where did y'all come from, right there? You. North Carolina? What city? Where's that? Southeast of Raleigh. Oh, Southeast of Raleigh, okay. Welcome, so honored to have y'all. Anyone, anybody else come from outside? Let's just say the U.S. There's a ton from different cities. Anybody from here from outside the U.S.? Yes, we're, no? We know where the, where the U.S. is, right? We're good? Okay. Anyone else? For, for, up to where? Where am I looking? Oh, yeah, where are you from? Colombia. Welcome. I've been there. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, church, can we please welcome them? So wonderful. I don't want to get to all of it, but God bless you. So honored to have you. So let's just remain standing. If you were here this morning, you know what's about to happen. It's worthy of double praise as we thank the Lord. But I'm holding in my hand the DP permit that allows us to begin construction on the building. I should say it's the approval notice. It's the approval notice. That's what it's called. Thank you, Lord. So now we can begin the civil work and uh, the, the company we're using got to work quickly and they began ordering supplies already. And I think we have a meeting, a construction meeting, and then we pull the trigger and we get going. Come on. And uh, it's so encouraging. The people are hearing from the Lord 
to fly to Orlando to give an offering for the building. That's crazy. And they're not flying in from like Pensacola or Charlotte. They're flying in from Singapore. Uh, it's amazing. And they've asked to, uh, other places too, they've asked to come on the land and bring the Lord an offering for the generations to come. Hallelujah. And yes. And I, I want to thank Carla. I do want to thank Carla. Her and Jay work so hard. Carla, and, and the reason I believe Carla that she probably uh, locked down like a pit bull on, on, the, on the wonderful group at the city that we love very much, to so say amen. And um, she said, Pastor, I did just about everything shy of getting a restraining order. I said, I like that. I like that. So that being said, Carla has worked so hard along with the entire team. And I just think we should honor Carla. She's done such a good job. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Carla. And amazing. It's really amazing how quick they can get this stuff going now. I mean, once stuff starts going vertical, it's all going to come together. We've got three phases we have to build out, and it'll be incredible. Most likely, by the time we move in, we'll say we need another building. <laughs> at, at the rate by which the Lord is doing things. I think we're how many hundreds ahead of last year where we were currently for Jesus' school enrollment? We're double where we were last year at this time for Jesus School enrollment. Come on, give Jesus all the glory. He's doing beautiful things. And uh, just as you remain standing, uh, the same applies. We're not quite at double, but we're well ahead of where we were last year for Jesus 23. This far out too is right, right? So for 24, we are well ahead of where we were for 23, and 23 was a massive turnout. So that being said, if you're anywhere that's close to anywhere, get there. I used to say on the West Coast, but then I realized that one of our events, we had 120 nations represented. I think Jesus 18 or 19. So there have been a ton, a ton of, of internationals who come. God is going to move at that event. And uh, can we put the speakers up, please? Yeah, it's going to be such a special time. And... Um, I, I don't know why, I just love seeing Sister Pinya up there. It's just amazing. And to have Christine join us for the first time is a great honor and blessing. Bill is back for the first time since 2016. Uh, Francis, <laughs> my Chinese brother, is, is coming. It's just going to be special, you know. Steph lacks so much passion. I'm sure she's watching. We need to help her with her zeal, don't we? We'll get her a little. We'll lay hands on her. We'll do this little zeal prayer meeting so that she has more passion for Jesus. But it's going to be phenomenal. And uh, people are really registering from all over the world. Our teams are going to get there early. We'll be seeking the Lord. I just got a, a message from Lindy, who is most likely watching right now as well, two days ago. And she told me, how stirred her and her crew are at Circuit Riders regarding what they're expecting God to do. The, the whole area is, is in a beautiful way, trembling in anticipation and faith. And I feel like this event is going to catalyze and catapult something for the ministry that, that we've never experienced and for the nation. Amen? Amen. So let's give Jesus all the praise. If you'd like to register go back to the next slide. Just scan that QR code. If you haven't registered yet, you need to. That arena will be filled to capacity, and I can't wait to see the, what the Lord Jesus will do. Amen? Amen. All right. God bless you. You, might, you may be seated. Did I do good, Carla? Thank you. Thank you. We all have our strengths. Yeah, so on the way here, I, I felt to teach on worship. And uh, it's one of like the five books I'm supposed to finish. Uh, 
Ja. <laughs> I have an interesting life. But I, I, God speak, get, speaks to my heart, and then I, can, I, 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 I know via Scripture His character well enough to realize that when He puts something on our heart that He expects us to see it through. And so I've been, as you know, worship is such a huge part of this house. And there's a real war over worship. And I just kind of want to talk to you tonight about what worship is, uh, what it is not, and the blessings of worship, and how to protect it. Is that okay? Yeah. Let's pray. Father in heaven, teach us to be worshipers. And teach us to love you and know you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. At the core, and I, I'd begin writing if I were you, especially if you're a musician or a vocalist or a house mom who's so confused with your children, all you're left to do is sing. <laughs> and I've been there. Worship find, finds its origin in the most simple form and a simple love for Jesus. Worship is loving Jesus. And I could get into the word, the Hebrew words of worship and the Greek words of worship. I've taught extensively online on that. But it's vital that worship flows from a burning heart and that Jesus be central in our worship experience. And when I say worship, I want to be clear, it is not limited to singing. Yeah. All right, so before we get into the creation account, which is a beautiful picture of worship, I want you to go to Genesis chapter 22. And this is the Abraham and Isaac account that I've taught on before here, but from a more allegorical perspective. In other words, uh, the prophetic meaning of the text, which is obviously the Lord Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. But it's very important, especially you, which most of you in this room are probably Gen Z, it's very important that you do not confuse your favorite music with worship. Now, some of your favorite music might be worship, but there's a good chance that a lot of it is not. Something can have Christian lyrics and not be worship. You understand? Because um, unfortunately, the world has figured out that Christians love to listen to music. And so there are unbelieving people writing Christian songs, knowing that you will stream them, knowing that they can make a living doing it. It just takes a few of the right wording, lyrics, just an adjustment with verbiage, and they know that there are tens of millions of Christians who will play it. And so that's why when you turn on a radio station or stream something, uh, sometimes you feel the presence of God and sometimes you don't. Because worship has much more to do with the heart, you understand, than throwing the name of Jesus or some biblical phrase into a song that has not been entrusted to us from heaven. Do you understand? Yes. So in Genesis 22, I'd like some help just, just to protect my voice. Uh, who do we got? Who can read for me? Amy, we got your, you can just put the mic right there on your belly and use it as a, 
as a stand. <laughs> Do you eat breakfast off your belly? Like just put it on there? No? <clears throat> no? Okay, go ahead. Genesis chapter 22. <laughs> I want you to begin reading in verse 3. And then I'll tell you when to stop. But let's pray first. Holy Spirit, teach us to worship Jesus so that he would be greatly glorified in our lives. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. Mm. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father, and he said, here I am, my son. Mm. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt wow. offering? Wow, just let me stop you there. How many of you remember what John the Baptist said when Jesus arrived at the shores of the Jordan? Behold the lamb of God. He was literally answering this question. Amazing, thousands of years later, answering this question. Answering this promise when Abraham said, the Lord will provide a lamb, John the Baptist declares over Jesus in John chapter 1, verse 29, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Sorry, Amy, keep, keep reading. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon mm. the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by caught its in thorns. Life. In a thicket. Yeah, it's very, very symbolic. Keep going. By its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. All right, let's stop there. Genesis 22 is the first time we see the word worship mentioned, to the best of my knowledge, in the scripture. And notice Abraham doesn't sing a single lyric on Mount Moriah. I'm going to say that again. Abraham says, I'm going to take what is my best, what God has given me, and I'm going to offer him to God. In this case, his son Isaac, who came to Abraham from God. Now this is so holy, I never hear this in modern preaching, ever. I hear more about fulfilling your own dreams than what I'm about to say. We have forgotten that God has the right to ask for what he's given us. Which is a much higher form of worship than giving him what we don't like about us. Now you should do the latter, let me be really clear. You should cast your cares upon the Lord. You should confess your sins to Jesus, lay them at the foot of the cross and ask him to wash them with his precious blood. But that is really the shallow end of the pool. You know, it's like the little kiddie pool where everyone wears the little wings, like Luke. You know, no. You still love that, doing that? <laughs> so, Luke's the best. All right. It's so fun to mess with. All right. We should do that, but that's not the highest place. 
it's much more difficult to surrender back to God what you know he has given you. The reason the anointing is so rare on people is because they want to be anointed via their own design. Which is to make God your employee who serves your vision. Well, let me stick with worship here. But I want to be very aware that not a single melody is constructed. There's no lyrical, there's no lyric chart here. There's no musical chart, I should say. There's no bridge being written. There's no build up. There's no choir. It's a man giving his best. All right, hold on. Let me go further. It's a man surrendering his God-given miracle back to God. Why would God request this of Abraham? Think Bible. Well, I'll show you. Turn left. Take a hard left. Go to Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. Let me just say this to you. When God talks to you, he remembers what he said. And God remembers if you said amen to it or not. So if you did, uh, he'll remind you of the amen. Amy, read uh, Genesis 15, verse 1, please. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Stop. Listen to this. Oh, Candace, you're taking Jet Jones out? All right. He gets special treatment. He's like six foot two already. <laughs> so wild. I held him. <laughs> I was like holding me. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your exceedingly great reward. So who is Abraham's reward? Jesus or Isaac? Isaac is a reward. Jesus is the reward. Whenever the Lord challenges us, it's because he loves us. The Lord was after keeping Abram from idolatry. So he gave Abram a miracle son through whose seed Jesus would come. Well, that's a big deal. Yes or no? And that's why the scripture says regarding Abraham that in his seed all nations shall be blessed. You, that's not just about a nation called Israel that is separate from Jesus. We, we, we do honor Israel. We see them as God's covenant people, of course. But what is the covenant all about? It's regarding the Messiah. And we love the Holy Land, not because of the food only, only, notice I said only. We love the Holy Land not because of the haagen stand near the Jordan River. Not that I've ever been there or seen it. It's a beautiful nation, no doubt. It's very special. You get there, you know. But why is it the blessed land? Because of the king. A better king than David. So Genesis 15 tells Abraham, I am your exceedingly great reward. Genesis 22 comes along. Now Abraham has a reward. Not the reward. 
You've got to be real careful that you don't confuse Jesus with what Jesus has given you. Be real careful with that. At the same time, that doesn't give us liberty to neglect what he's given us because he is connected to that. Obedience matters. But if you're going to be entrusted with more, listen to this, and this is for a mature crowd, and I might be making a mistake talking about this on Sunday night. It's more like a school-type teaching. But if you are going to be entrusted, you must constantly yield back to the Lord what he's given you. Or you won't make it long term. You just won't make it. If you don't do that, what he's given you will become your God. And he won't have it because he loves us. And that's the heartbeat and the origin of the challenge. Give me your son. Now what Abram knew somehow is that if he gives God what God is requesting, that's worship. All right, let's have a family talk. Thank you, Kathleen. That means if you're up here singing, doing the Jesus image thing, you know, you take your selfie, which by the way, don't record the team while you're worshiping. Sing to Jesus. How far is that recording going to take you? I hate that. Sometimes I'll be up there with the team and I'll look down, I'm worshiping, I'll look down and someone's like, what are you doing here, bro? You're in the wrong house for that. I will roundhouse those cell phones. I won't, Carla, calm down. Nikki's our HR director. I won't roundhouse anything that's connected to a human. I promise. But you're down there, you're kind of doing your song. Huh? And then offering time comes and you're so used to the presence of God that you're used to coming into his presence without something costly. Because you live in a place and with the people who are in his presence. It's quite dangerous, huh? To get used to something that Jesus died to provide us. His own presence. Then there's a lady who wasn't here at the altar because she's not under 25. And she doesn't have a Jesus image hoodie on. She kind of barely even knows what's going on in here. She thinks some of y'all are nuts. She's not seasoned. She doesn't have all the routine down, all the Christian language and lingo. But eventually... It's time to give the offering. Let's just say she didn't even know the songs we were singing. And she brings something down that aisle that was so costly that it moved her heart. And let me say this. If it's not moving your heart, it's probably not moving God's heart. If you're not feeling that sense of sacrifice deep within it's way different than what Abraham had to do. It's not about the melody. It's not about the chorus. Though that matters if you're aware of Jesus. If you're not, it's just repetitious behavior. It's religion. Singing without an awareness of Jesus is not why he died. But then somebody brings something that has nothing to do with music. And God sees it as worship. So I want you to realize that the first time the scriptures, Moses writes the book of Genesis, by the way. How many of you know Moses was a worshiper? It's pretty hard to live in that cloud and not be one. The first time Moses mentions the word worship is the offering of what is precious. Sacrifice is beautiful. I talked about this this morning. A sacrificial life is beautiful. And you can hear in the tone of somebody's voice often and the content of what they talk about whether or not they have stopped living sacrificially. 
because you will hear less and less about Jesus and more, more, more and more about what is wrong with everyone else. I've seen this happen to people. I've seen it in the worship environment. I've seen it in the preaching environment where, where people lose their singular vision. They lose the message they were entrusted with. It happens all the time. Nobody gets into this thing to backslide. It just starts with the slightest veering off of taking Isaac up the mountain. It happens so much. It's one of the things I so honor about Steph, for instance, is she's more passionate about Jesus than she's ever been. I was thinking about that yesterday. Jesse and I were driving from Tampa, uh, Tarpon Springs, to be with my parents, and we drove her driving back, and I don't know what it is with I-4 now, but it's like, it doesn't matter what time you drive. It's bumper to bumper by Disney, and before that, I told you all, it's demonic. I've been telling you all that for a year. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I don't know. Gosh, I'm glad. Uh, anyways. So, it's just devilish down there. It's like, all, like it's great for Christmas because all you see are red lights in front of you. <laughs> White ones coming this way and red ones going the other way. I don't know how people do it. It's horrible. Sorry. Just getting it out. Yesterday was traumatic. <laughs> and so we turned on Steph's, some of Steph's old stuff. and Man, it was beautiful. Just a burning little... I don't even know what to call her, like a tennis ball that was dipped in gasoline and lit on fire. She'd bounce that thing all over the place. That's what it felt like. But now when I listen to Steph, she's more on fire, more clear. Her writing is more clear than it's ever been. It's so about Jesus. It's so thick. It's heavy. There's not a wasted word. You don't get there by accident. It, and it's a rarity to see someone as, as they get older become more and more clear. And that's indicative of, a, of, a, of eyes that are more and more locked on Jesus. You understand? So worship at the core, I want you to look at some of the symbolism here. You can find a few things. Number one is a father offering his son. That sounds familiar. I said that sounds familiar. A son carrying wood up a hill. That sounds familiar. Uh, fire being available. That sounds familiar. That speaks of the acceptance of a sacrifice and a foreshadowing of Pentecost. Abraham saying, we will return. The lad and I will return to you. We're going up to worship. That speaks of the resurrection. So what am I saying? Worship has everything to do with a revelation of the gospel. Yes. It happened tonight, and it's happened since our days over at Judah. People come in for the music, thinking they came to worship, and they leave after the music, not knowing they forfeited worship. Because worship is not limited to the song. Without a revelation of Jesus from the scriptures, you cannot properly worship. What they got was music and probably some moments in the presence of God. But what they forfeited was a revelation of Jesus, therefore forfeited a lifestyle of worship. I've said from the beginning, this is not a weekly concert. And it'll never be. We make that announcement on the road at the Jesus Tour. Do we not, Carla? I said, Carla, I want you to, or I think, do you do it or does Jess do it? You both do it. Double portion. All right. <laughs> That's what's needed. They say, I have Jesse go out five minutes before music begins. And I say this. Tell them this is not a concert. Let us tell you what this is not and we'll tell you what this is. This is not a concert. This is a night in the presence of Jesus which requires the preaching of the word. Proper preaching of the word 
is filled with worship. Do you see that team? Wave, guys, like a class picture. There you go, look at them all. <laughs> that team sits under the word of God. If they didn't, they would not be up here. I wouldn't trust them to be up here. I would question who they're worshiping if they didn't have a revelation of God through the scripture. How can they lead this house in worship if they don't sit under the word of God that comes to this house? What you see in many environments is the team leads and they're gone. And you wonder why the oil dries up. And it happens slowly but surely. When Steph comes, is she not on the front row sobbing and crying? I could just read like one word from a genealogy and she starts crying. <laughs> but you're seeing the connection here. Abraham says we're going to worship and you see the gospel as being central. It's vital, guys. I said it's vital. If you want to become a worshiper, here's the point. Become a master at finding Jesus, specifically his death, burial, and resurrection in Holy Scripture. It will birth worship in you. If you read the Bible properly, by the way, the Bible is not a textbook. Don't ever settle with human knowledge here. That's important that your mind is renewed. Look, if you're going to know stuff in an intellectual way, know Christ. You, let the weight of the gospel fill every aspect of your being. But don't let it stop there. Never stop shy, as I said this morning, of a burning heart. Never. That is the Emmaus culture. The Emmaus culture is they saw him with burning hearts. And that's what Bible study with Jesus looks like. You're filled with awe and wonder. Your heart is burning. You see him in the broken bread, the broken body, the torn loaf. This is what it looks like to worship the Lord Jesus. And it produces worship in us. All right, now go to Genesis chapter 2. And Amy, can you begin reading... Um, verse 4. This is the history of heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth. And there was no man to till the ground. But a mist went up from the ground and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. All right, stop. And the Lord God formed man, speaking of Adam, Adam, which means man or earth creature, <laughs> formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Say the breath of life. And man became a living being. When did Adam truly come alive? Prior to the breath of God or after? All right. Without the breath of God, even if you're fearfully and wonderfully designed, you still lay dead in the hands of God. Point is, you can have the greatest church structure, the greatest life structure, the greatest plan. You can plant campuses all over the place. But if God doesn't breathe, it is a clanging symbol. It's still dead. That's why you've never heard Jesus' image say, we have this many people. All I know is, it was... I, my heart actually, and I know, I know there's something to celebrate, but I, people dear to me, first thing I would see on Easter, I want to thank everyone at the church and our amazing team. Blankety blank thousand came to church. Okay, I understand you should, we should have a value for people coming to hear. But why can't I ever read a caption that says, 
We had an amazing service because the Lord Jesus was there. You have to be real careful. If you want to build culture, you have to be careful what you repetitively celebrate. Because if you repetitively celebrate metrics and metrics alone, that will become your gauge. And then you'll have no theology for the moments where Jesus, in his own ministry, dismisses the crowds. See, you have to be content enough with the Lord's presence, period, so that if you go somewhere and there's 20 people, you don't feel like a failure. And if there's 20,000, you don't feel any better. Because if you feel better about the 20,000 than the 20, you will compromise to get the 20,000. It happens all over the place in church in America. It's, it's a lack of understanding that unless God breathes, Adam is still dead, regardless of the beauty of the design. Now, the beauty of the design is vital, and wineskin is vital, and structure and organization and excellence is vital. It is wineskin, but it's made for wine. And so here, Adam has been formed out of the ground, you know, God, God has a thing for this planet. It's, a, it's wild. I'm not, I don't know why he wants to come live here. But he does. You know he's going to rule and reign here forever. I don't know why. Thank God he's going to fix it up. I'm like, Lord, are you sure, you, are you sure about that? <laughs> but he does, and so much so that he takes soil from this planet forms Adam. And Adam is lying in his arms still, in his hands I should say, and God breathes into Adam and Adam comes alive. I want you to think about this now. How does this apply to worship? Adam's first vision would have been the face of God. Think about that. I mean, he's dead as a doornail. He's dead. He's in God's hands. And God says, here, I'm going to breathe into your, nostrils, into your nostrils. You don't breathe from a distance. So the Lord is eye to eye with Adam, face to face, close enough to breathe into his nostrils. The breath of life, the very spirit of the Lord, fills Adam and Adam comes alive and becomes a living soul. Adam's first exhale would have been the release of that breath of life while he's staring at the Lord's face. And by the way, you can't take Jesus out of that one. If you look at ancient liturgical art uh, from the early church, you always see the Lord as being the pre-incarnate word who is creating Adam in that moment. The, the Lord does everything as Trinity. And this is why at the end of John's gospel, Jesus breathes into the disciples and says, receive the Holy Spirit. That's a huge statement. He's saying, I'm no ordinary carpenter. I am the God of Genesis 2. I'll prove it. Whew. Receive the Holy Spirit. Amazing. I said amazing. So let's look at the picture. Adam is dead. God breathes into him. He comes alive, releases that breath with a vision of the Lord's face. That's worship. I said, that's worship. Now do you understand what he did with the disciples on the road to Emmaus? Our eyes must open if we're going to worship. A vision of his face is necessary. I don't mean an actual open-eyed vision. If God gives you one, pray, thank the Lord Jesus for that. But in the purest form, worship is the reception of God's spirit and then by the Spirit, offering my life sacrificially as a giant exhale 
because his face is so beautiful. Make sense? One of the Hebrew words for worship is to kiss. So I don't like that. It's too romantic. Find a girlfriend, man. It's too romantic. Get married. I don't know. It shouldn't freak you out. Go to Song of Solomon. This is very, don't worry, guys. It's not a dating teaching. I go to Song of Solomon. They're like, oh, this about Jesus. I, I told you all this before. I had someone say, Song of Solomon has nothing to do with Jesus. A friend of mine went off to seminary, came back saying that. I go, really? Nothing about Jesus, huh? I thought Jesus said the scriptures speak of me. I said, out of curiosity, what's the book about? And they said, dating. I go, dating? Dating? Uh, my daughter is not going to date that way. <laughs> what do you mean, dating? I don't know what kind of house you grew up in. You ever read the Song of Solomon? <laughs> dating. Think God wrote a dating book? It's all about Jesus. Amy, read the Song of Songs, chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. And then I'm going to pray with you all. Then I'm going to have you guys pray for one another. Go ahead. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Stop there, Amy. You're going to have to work with me. You know how I get this is the song of songs. That means it's the greatest song. I'm going to say that again. When it comes to loving Jesus, which is what the Song of Solomon is all about, it's the song of song. It's the greatest revelation, first love. That's right. Wow. Loving Jesus, as I've said, is life's greatest accomplishment. Yes. yes. Say it's the song of songs. Which is Solomon's. That means we didn't write it. The Lord did. Yep. Solomon symbolizes Jesus the bridegroom here. The Shulamite symbolizes the bride. And the daughters of Jerusalem speak of not anyone here, just those who would like to attend church occasionally. I know there's no one here. I would ever do that. So when it says that this song is Solomon's, it speaks to this, that this song of first love, the author of that song, is the bridegroom himself. Loving him is his idea. Oh, you better start giving him praise. Verse 2, read that, Amy. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For Let you. him kiss me. Ah, that's creation language. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Somebody who's in love with Jesus is, is grateful for the one touch, but never satisfied with one touch. They are satisfied in a healthy way, but in the most holy way, they keep coming. Now, to receive a kiss from the Lord, you cannot be scattered. You, 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 you have to understand the Lord, as I've said many times here, the Lord does not kiss moving targets. And scatteredness is never his fault. Distraction is never God's fault. It's always our fault. God is not the author of distraction. Satan is. Isaiah writes, you've wearied yourself with your many ways. Uh, when we're worn out, it's often because we are carrying too much that we put on us. And we call it the Lord. So here we see this positioning that is very similar to the Adamic account, the creation account. Where Adam is eye to eye, face to face, mouth to mouth, breath exchange. You see the same language here in Song of Solomon chapter 1. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. In other words, nothing in this natural world compares to how I feel when you breathe the breath of life into me. Amen. To this day, in a Catholic or an Orthodox baptism, the priest blows into the baby's face when the baby comes out of the water. So this tradition has been going on since the early church because Jesus breathed into the disciples the breath of the Spirit. What's that to say? 
Let me end here, and then we'll pray, and we'll see what the Lord does. Worship is not generated, and we're not the author of it. We have to position ourselves in stillness to behold the Lord so that he might kiss us and fill us with the breath of life. Worship becomes the natural response, which is Adam's exhale, and we are filled with divine life over and over and over again. Which is why what I said earlier is so important. Without the word of God, your worship will be incredibly limited because you will have a limited view of the character of God. We praise the Lord for what he's done. We worship the Lord for who he is, who he is, who he is at a heart level. What is his character? We're not like Israel who camps out uh, with the revelation of his ways. We want to know the Lord. We praise him because of his ways. But if you're going to step into worship, you've got to be face to face. And that takes time. It takes a lot of time. Can you help me, Joel? Uh, something so, uh, so incredible to me. Let me just show you here. I, I think we're all going to be really surprised in heaven at the simplicity of the Lord's heart. The Bible says in Psalm 45, I'm just trying to pull the right version here. In the ESV, in Psalm 45, verse 8, I want you to see this. See, I, I think some people just don't understand why I call Emma or Cord up or Joel will play at certain times. This is just one example because all the instruments are valuable to the Lord. But just so you can have an understanding spiritually of what's going on. I don't understand this aspect of God in verse 8, Psalm 45. Amy, what version do you have? NK, NK, NKJV. Okay, yeah, it won't, it won't read properly there. Let me read, I'm going to read NIV. I have that as well. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to read NIV and then the ESV. For all my theologians, I'm going to read ESV, so chill out. Okay. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. You know, I was just with the sisters in Phoenix, and as we were walking through the prayer garden, they had acacia flowers and cassia. It was so cool to walk through a garden with biblical plants. And these speak of the sweetness of his presence and the suffering of his heart. So instantly we know that Psalm 45 is all about Jesus. He's the most beautiful of men, the scripture says. He's the most excellent. And verse 8 here says, uh, start reading there. Well, actually, I've got it, Amy, sorry. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. What did they bring to the Lord's burial? Aloes? From palaces adorned with ivory, the music, listen to this, the music of the strings makes you glad. I don't know why. Anyone feel better in the heart right now when Stroll started playing? Yeah, you do, right? That's not me trying to give you an anesthesia to build some ethereal moment. It's most beneficial in settings like this to teach the word 
in an environment of worship because that's the biblical pattern ESV reads this your robes are all fragrant with myrrh speaking of his death aloes again speaking of his death that brings healing Acacia speaks of his suffering from ivory palaces stringed instruments make you glad the new american standard reads it this way stringed instruments speaking of the son of god here have made you joyful that's why we have strings he says is there any other reason not really he likes them why i don't know david figured it out so here's my question before we pray What devilish enemies need to die around you? Number one. Number two, how have you been trying to obtain victory? And has any of it been according to the pattern of worship? If not, I would submit this to you that your worship is more powerful than you wielding a self-constructed sword. If the devil cannot weaken you to the point to steal your song, you are not out of the fight. Never give your song away because you're going through it so badly. News flash, we go through it. We do <laughs> all the time. But here's what the devil can't stop. He cannot stop this. He'd have to kill me to stop it. And then if he killed me, I would do it in heaven. And I just have a better front row seat. He cannot take what I'm about to tell you from me. Regardless of what I'm going through, you know, ministry is not easy. Life is not easy. If I walk through these doors, and I realized that my first calling is to love Jesus, not to pastor you. That's what makes me a decent pastor, I would hope. See, if my first calling is to pastor you, I will fail you. Because what you're really looking for is the presence of God. You're not looking for me. So if I walk in here knowing, before I'm called to preach or lead you, I am called to stand right here and lift my hands and worship Jesus. It makes no sense in the natural that that can accomplish something great, but it does. The devil can never take that. When we start to do that as a church family, we gain an audience with God. At that point, once we gain an audience with the Lord, he begins to rule and reign over circumstances. Because the Bible says, yes, he inhabits the praises of his people, but he also is enthroned upon the praises of his people. So at that point, kingdom rule and reign begins to flow through a people. I want to give you full permission to come hell or high water, you worship more than you've ever worshipped in your entire life. There might be a song, but it also looks like giving what's precious away all the time. It's why I'm concerned about certain perspectives in the church right now that are attacking a heart to serve and volunteer. It's very rampant in like Gen Z. It's this thing like as though that's bad. That never ends. If you want to be a Christian, you're going to constantly be sacrificing, which is constant worship. If it's done with an awareness of Jesus. Now, I don't think it's healthy to use ministry settings 
to justify the neglect of family. That don't, don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not talking about sacrifice in that way. I'm talking about in moments where you come in and the flesh is rising up against you. And you're like, I just don't feel like it tonight. That's when you do it. Like our team's on a rotation, our staff's on a rotation. They each miss a Sunday every certain amount of weeks. And that was done very methodically and for the sake of longevity. Because my dream isn't to have the biggest church. My dream is to worship with these people for decades. That's what I want to do. I want, I want to worship alongside their children. Now if God sends them out, I still want them to be able to come home like Raul. I want, I want people to be able to come back and worship alongside of us. That is success to me. It's not the only measure, but it's a big deal to me. And if that's going to happen, they're going to need to make it for the long haul. And that requires a Christ-like rhythm to life. So they come back to Jesus. They're all excited. Oh, Lord, you should see what just happened, as though he didn't know. We were the best preachers out there. Oh, my gosh. People got healed. He's like, yeah, that's what I told you to go do, and I did it through you. You just didn't know. <laughs> What's the first thing he does? He says, come away. Let's take a break. Huh? They try their best to take a break, and they can't because they get mobbed. But you see the Lord's leadership there. It's very, very important. So I'm not saying run yourself into the ground to sing or play or show up. or No, no, no. But I am saying that there will be times where your natural body doesn't want to do it. Do not make a habit of listening to the flesh. I'm not saying if you need to stay home and take a break and just go on a walk, go hit seven irons. We all know that's beautiful. All right? No, 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 no. But there are moments where you know God has called you to be in the house and all of a sudden that little pest called the, called the flesh rises up. So I don't want to be here. Don't think it's just another song, just another set. Blah, 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 blah. That's when you settle in your soul and go, there must be oil on the other side of this if the flesh is so disturbed. And so you do what Paul did. You say, I'm going to daily put my body under subjection. Now here's the wild part. If you know what you're doing in prayer and worship, you can actually move the heart with the declaration of the mouth. With, when the body doesn't feel like it, you start worshiping Jesus and praising Jesus. You put the scriptures on your mouth and you begin to adore the Lord. Now all of a sudden you feel like it, right? Okay, I'm gonna be an honest pastor. I didn't wanna come tonight. I am tired. I'm a human being, I'm tired. Holy Week was a long week. We traveled before that. I went to see my parents yesterday. As I said, I wrestled principalities between the Buena Vista exit and Lakeland. <laughs> I was tired. And I came Sunday morning and gave my all today. And most of our team, a lot of them are on the road. And Jess is tired, so she stayed, she stayed home tonight. She's wiped out. And I drove here going, oh, what am I going to do? I have nothing to say. I told the team when I got out, they were in the parking lot. I go, are you preaching? I, go, I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. And I, I almost talked myself into having nothing to say. Then I came into his presence. And I go, oh, I know why I'm alive. <laughs> oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm not, I have no notes. These are just verses. I don't have a three-point outline. But see, when you feast on the Word, it gets inside of you. It's seed. And it starts living inside of you. And you don't know what's going to come out until somebody's hunger taps it. Until you get in the presence of God and the anointing of the Spirit takes over. All of a sudden you go, oh. I mean, the beginning of a set can be slow and sleepy. And then all of a sudden you start going and whoosh, you're gone. You go, ah, oh, I'm alive now. Here we go. Let's go. So you don't bow down to your initial 
resistance from the flesh, welcome to the big leagues. Who feels like flying to Germany right now? Maybe those young kids do. I wouldn't. <laughs> Last time I flew to Germany, I'm not joking. How hot was it on that plane? It, you were on a different plane too. I don't know. I'm not going to give the name of the plane or the people, but it was a sauna. I went in the bathroom. Lily, how hot was it in there? I took my sweatshirt off. If I could have taken my shirt off, I would have. It was so hot. I went in the bathroom multiple times and was splashing water all over my body. David came off the plane beat red because he's pasty anyways. He's like. <laughs> and Raul flew from Seattle to Frankfurt to meet us in the airport. And he came out looking like he had like, uh, like, like when it got exfoliated or something. He was like, <laughs> like face was all full and red. He's like, that was brutal. Who feels like doing that? Nobody does. Well, then you land and step into your assignment and God meets you. And then the grace meets you. And you realize, I wouldn't want to live without this grace. You got to get used to going up the mountain with what's precious to you. Your time, your comfort, your resources, your finances. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, say. Until you actually dip your toe in the river, he will not give you the grace to fulfill the assignment. You gotta join the dance. You understand? So the next time you walk in and you go, I don't wanna be here. Man, just go like this in your heart. We are the sheep of your pasture. You died for me. You shed your blood for me. You, you're here, Lord. You're the God of the whole universe. You're inviting me into your presence. That is my life. You're the literal air and life that flows through my being. Then all of a sudden, as you begin to minister to the Lord, the Holy Spirit begins to carry you. And then the Lord starts moving. Would you all stand, please? I want us uh, tonight, I, I'm feeling it's very strongly again, I guess I'm going to just go, I feel that many of you in this room are, are still holding on to pain the people have caused. And it's, this isn't a shameful setting. And in just a moment, in fact, could the prayer team come forward, please? Just so all of y'all come up, please. Would you just close your eyes and just pray in the spirit just for like 20 seconds? Uh, worship team, would y'all come? you bow your head and close your eyes tonight in a room like this there's no doubt in my heart that there are many people here who are being controlled by sin who are yielding their life their members their heart their thoughts to sin and I, I'm, I feel so strongly in my heart the Lord's word declaring come out from among them and be separate step out of that horrific bondage and step into the freedom that the cross offers that Jesus himself bled and died for I'm going to open the altars in just a second to, a, to multiple heart postures tonight one would be that that you need freedom from sin and that you want to give your life completely to the Lord Jesus for the first time or maybe you've left the Lord and you're no longer walking with him and you know it I would encourage you to come to Jesus tonight 
The second group is that unforgiving group. And I, I don't think I've ever felt this before in the five years we've been doing these Sunday nights. But I feel like unforgiveness is holding many of you back. You're counting people's sin against them. And God will count yours against you if you do that. Uh, being forgiven by God is no small issue. And I, I think, I don't know why I'm saying this either. I think forgiveness is being misunderstood in your heart. Forgiveness doesn't mean full agreement and re restoration. It means you're releasing them of the penalty. You're not taking the position of God and that you're allowing the Lord to be God and that you're actually willing to pray for your enemy and bless them and pray God's best for them. And if you're not there, you really haven't truly forgiven. If you cannot pray the best over the ones who've hurt you the worst, you need to come down tonight. So if you're one of those two groups of people, I'm going to ask you to come down. Just step out of your seat. If you need to walk in forgiveness, if you need to release people, do it tonight. It'll liberate your soul. Yeah, God bless you. It'll just set you free. But I hold on, I, I, I want you to, to come with and get prayer from a, a, somebody on the prayer team for this. At, at, for this, I want someone to walk you through it. And I prayer team, I want you to just pray with them that God would aid them. Look how many people are coming. That God would aid them in this. If you need to receive Jesus tonight, then you're just going to tell the prayer team, walk me through this beautiful moment of forgiveness and salvation. So for those of you getting on your knees, rather than getting on your knees, I want you to line up and have somebody from the prayer team pray with you. Can I have the wheelers help as well? Would you guys help? Madeline, would you help too? Find a partner. Chesney, would you join with Madeline? Come here, Allison. Team, would you come? I want you to sing, You're Still My First Love. The rest of us, let's just worship for a few minutes as, as the Lord ministers to these people's hearts. Nathan and Kathleen, would you help too? Ushers, we have some room over here for people who need prayer on this side. But let's help move them that way. guys in the front row, you're welcome to help. Pray. I feel my heart. Look, look how many people need to release, release people. Just worship the Lord. Raul, you want to help for a little bit? We've got some openings here. Hey, Jones, would you help Raul? Yeah, right there, Raul.
Look at all these people. This is so wonderful. them all, release them all.
We believe that the nations will descend on this land. That the sick will be healed here. That the lost will be saved here. That the presence of the glory of God will rest here. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. That the mountains might shake at your presence. That the gospel will go forth from here. Shaking the earth for the glory of God. That the presence of Jesus Christ would dwell among us. Here we will enter into the peace of your presence. Here we will remain. Jesus said, remain in me and I in you. Here we will remain. This is holy ground. Where only one thing is needed, Jesus. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped here. May his word be taught in clarity and love here. As we tell the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works he has done. May the generations come to find him here. To find Jesus here. Here. Together we will build the house of God. And a home for his people.